he said, I'm not offering you the glitz and glam of your life. I'm offering you a home for a while that, that I think you will come to enjoy. That, that intrigued me. I was like, I've always wanted to have home. I've always wanted to belong. And so I thought, well, this could be the, this could be the chance. Wow. From Trevor's couch in New York City. New and York the chance to weigh in on serious topics. When this is awesome, man. COVID hit and he was broadcasting from his apartment. Nearly 11 million people watched his monologue on race and George Floyd. There was a black man on the ground in handcuffs and you, you could take his life so you did almost knowing that there would be no ramifications. And it wasn't and funny. Again, and now we have a new dimension to Trevor. I guess. I guess you've seen a different dimension to Trevor. I've always had the different dimension. Well, you showed it to the public. That, that's true. Some of the funniest people we know on the planet have depression. You come to mind. Well, I think over the years, what I've come to learn, thanks to some great therapists, is my depression is created by a severe level of ADHD. ADHD looks like depression? What do you mean? So it can be different for different people. I'm not, you know, but like, so for my... I truly feel like, you know, people may agree, disagree with me. It's okay, regardless. I feel like a lot of times when you have everything you want on the material space, but you still have a depression, there's that little void that you're missing, and that's that God void. And when you don't have that God void, like that true God, God, um, and with you, being with you, you have that little emptiness, and that's what the depression kind of will. The depression will fill into that space. So it don't matter if you got five hundred million dollars; it it won't never be good enough on the material side. So that's why I think it, because that's the commonality of people that have all they want but they still be like down and depressed. Myself, it means that if I'm not careful in how I sleep, how I eat, how I, how I manage my routine, I can become overwhelmed and it can just feel like the whole world is just too heavy to bear. You said something that sticks with me. You said it wasn't till you came to the United States that real hate started coming at you. Oh yeah, definitely. What was the hate that you felt? Right. I'm and curious. It, did the cops ever stop you? I've been pulled over quite frequently by the cops. Yeah. One of my best friends, David Meyer, you know, would drive all over the West Coast to these comedy shows. If I was driving, we would get pulled over. And, and if then he, he was would driving? drive, we wouldn't get pulled over. But you did say you experienced And that sucks and that's so true too, because the officers looking who passing and they're deciding if they want to pull this person over versus not, you know, that's what sucks. Hey. Yes, but I mean, that's, that's welcome to America, you know? Mm, that's harsh. Yeah, there's a lot of hate in America because there's a lot of anger in America. How is it changing you? For me, I'm always trying to figure out how do I speak to somebody who hates me? This is where we are for now. Because and of his childhood, growing up between two different worlds, he tends to see both sides of an argument, take his reaction, to the trouble his friend, comedian Dave Chappelle, got in over his Netflix special, The Closer. We blacks, we look at the gay community. That was criticized as homophobic, transphobic, and misogynistic. In your mind, did he cross the line? Did Dave Chappelle cross the line? Yes, no. It immediately puts... That's what, no, that makes, that's what made Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, the line that he crossed. You know, if he won't, if Dave Chappelle won't cross on the line, he wouldn't be who he is. You need line, we need line crossers. Cause those are people that step out of norm and not go with the system and say that I need to do what everybody, what I'm being told to do. It's me in a position where I have to choose a side when I think that the matter is a lot more complex than that. I think everybody is defining the line for themselves. No, society defines a line. You, you see what you're saying now is you're saying society has decided, but America is clearly divided in that half of society has gone like, no, Dave Chappelle, we love what you said. We're sick of wokeness. We're sick of people being told what to say. We're sick of not knowing how to use the right pronoun. You're right, Dave Chappelle. So then if half of society is saying Dave Chappelle is right and half of society is saying that he's wrong, then that means there is no line. It means society is seeing the line from two different sides.
And so that's why I say you cannot say, did he cross the line? Because which side are you looking at the line from right. defines whether or not he crossed it. I agree. You're still learning I agree things all that. the time? Yes. I agree. Well, he's had to learn about New York City, his new home that. since 2015, buy an apartment here, make new friends. Let me ask you about your personal life for a minute. Do you want to have children? I, I go back and forth. Sometimes I will meet kids who make me go, I want a kid. And then sometimes I'll meet children where I go, I hope that my sperm doesn't do anything because this person is a terror. You're 37. <laughs> okay. You're right there. That's okay. the clock. It's ticking. Okay. But you don't feel it. No, I don't. You have a girlfriend now. I feel them. Maybe. <laughs> well, I read page six like oh, everybody else in this the, world. Oh, the tabloids. You don't like to talk about your uh, girlfriends. No. What is Trevor like with his girlfriends? No. It's a trick. You don't have to answer that question. Yes, oh, he does. Trevor <laughs> introduced us to comedy producer no. Ryan Harduth no. and comedian David no. Kibuka, now a supervising no. producer no. on The Daily Show. They're among his oldest friends from South Africa. Answer. You don't have to answer any questions about oh, really? personal well, relationships. Who told you that? Okay, what is Mitch McConnell no. like with his girlfriends? Do you know the answer to that question? I don't know. It. Exactly. Because he didn't answer it. Because they don't even ask him. And also because people don't want to know. This is what I'll say about Trevor with his girlfriends. Is that... So you're just fully going ahead with yes. that? Of course he yes. is. Wow. Of course he is. Okay. Is that he is very, very, um, like a great boyfriend. <laughs> That's a big old Paul. So he had a big old Paul. <laughs> so, um, what are the qualities that you like most about Trevor? He's a great boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor told us he hangs out with these guys often and talks with his mother every day. Things he says that keep him grounded. Is he a perfectionist? No. no. I wouldn't say he's a Workaholic? perfectionist. Workaholic? Yes. Uh, yes. I would say so. 100%. He sure is. Even though he does The Daily Show during the week and has hosted the Grammy Awards for the past two years, he refuses to give up his comedy shows. I, genuinely, I just love the feeling of a laugh. I think, I think when we laugh as human beings, that's when we're, we're our most authentic selves. Yeah. That's why your real laugh is so ugly. Do you know what I mean? It's not filtered in any way. It's just like, uh, I love that. It's like pure joy. Forget what people think, just laugh, you know? We need it every single day. Enjoy. way. Every single day. Watch Trevor Noah and his team write a daily show joke at 60minutesovertime.com, sponsored by Colaguard. All right, that was awesome, man. A little bit more education from on top of the things I already knew. You know, I learned a lot in all the specials that I had to take down. But um, yeah, that was dope. I, I enjoyed it. There was some other interesting topics in there, man. Um, but a lot of that stuff I already knew. Because we, like you said, man, we, we've done so much Trevor stuff that we know pretty much everything that he's verbalized. So. That was awesome, man. I hope Doc can post this up, man. I hope y'all like this. 60 Minutes with Trevor Noah. I, I, you know, it's probably been 15 years since I saw anything 60 Minutes anything. Because um, it used to be so boring to me, man. But, um, but yeah. Let's get it, man. I was 13 minutes to 16 minutes, man. Let me know if y'all want to see me do more stuff like that. Um, whether it's Trevor or not. I'm, I see now. If I don't do South Africa stuff, y'all y'all just go to sleep on me. But, um. So let's get it, man. I appreciate y'all, man. We'll see you on the next one. We're going to keep these rolling.